Dear Swedish friends, Sweden is a global leader in protecting and advocating human rights. And yet a Swedish court ruled against the extradition of Stefan Michnik, a former Stalinist judge who sentenced anti-communist resistance fighters and dissidents to death. Last year, a Polish court issued a European arrest warrant to bring him back and prosecute him. Your courts ruled that the charges presented against him are subject to a statute of limitations. But Mr. Miknik is not accused of just any crime. He is suspected of having committed 30 crimes bearing the hallmarks of crimes against humanity. And according to international law, crimes against humanity are not subject to limitations. In the past, Sweden has extradited people to Poland. In 2010, you extradited neo-Nazi leader Anders Hogström, who orchestrated the theft of the infamous Auschwitz death camp sign. Why then do you refuse to extradite Stefan Michnik, a man accused of crimes against humanity? Who is Stefan Michnik? From 1945 to 1989, Poland was ruled by a brutal communist regime. The communists knew that in order to impose their ideology, they had to eliminate all opposition, which in Poland was substantial. During the German Nazi occupation, the Poles had organized in a vast underground state with a large resistance army, loyal to the pro-democratic government in exile. As the Soviets advanced in 1944, they immediately began to persecute the soldiers of the home army. Polish soldiers were deported to gulags, sent to communist jails, or simply murdered. The leaders of the Polish underground state were deceived into a meeting with the communists. Despite repeated warrants of safety, 16 prominent Polish leaders were abducted and taken to the USSR, where they were tortured for several months before being sentenced in show trials. Several of them did not survive Soviet prisons. In Poland, tens of thousands of resistance fighters and partisans, loyal to the government in exile, were faced with communist jails, gulags, or death sentences. And so they retreated deep into the forests of Poland to continue their doomed struggle. Many of them fought well into the 50s. The very last of them, Józef Franczak, perished in a firefight in 1963, a whole 18 years after the Second World War had ended. These indomitable men became known as the cursed soldiers. The communist apparatus hunted them tirelessly and persecuted them mercilessly. Stefan Michnik was an active and willing participant of that apparatus. In 1947, he joined the Communist Party. Then in 1950, he volunteered as an informant to the security services. In 1951, he was assigned to the Warsaw Regional Military Court, where he started working as a judge. The following year, he was promoted to the rank of lieutenant. He worked as a judge till 1953, and in that period he participated as a judge or presiding judge in numerous trials of captured soldiers. As a judge, he participated and presided over numerous trials of the anti-communist resistance. Before the trial started, however, the prisoners would be subjugated to some Stalinist-style justice. This justice included week-long sleepless interrogation sessions during which prisoners were viciously beaten. Fingers and ribs would often be broken, fingernails ripped out, teeth knocked out. Prisoners would be humiliated, they would be dressed up in German uniforms, mocked and insulted. Sometimes their eyelids were burnt with cigarettes, some were waterboarded with gasoline, others had their genitalia crushed. All were repeatedly and violently beaten. These were just some of the torture methods employed by the security services in order to break prisoners, both physically and mentally. Witold Pilecki, one of the men who was jailed and tortured by the communists for several months, had during the war been the only known man to have volunteered to go to Auschwitz, where he spent almost two and a half years gathering intelligence and organizing a resistance network. However, he described his years in Auschwitz as child's play in comparison to what he endured at the hands of his Stalinist torturers. In order to break prisoners, the communists would often torture the prisoners' families. One of Pilecki's co-conspirators, Tadeusz Puzański, was subjugated to listening to his wife scream as she was being tortured in a cell nearby his. She was beaten so severely she had a miscarriage. The communist jails were so brutal and violent that the resistance fighters would often rather die fighting than be captured alive in order to spare themselves the pain of going through the justice system. Their last bullets would often be saved for themselves. This was communist justice and Stalinist judges and prosecutors were aware of the conditions in the prisons. They often participated in so-called interrogation sessions. 
This was the justice system that Stefan Michnik willingly served. Over the course of his career as a judge, he was involved in tens of trials against Polish war heroes. He sent many to their deaths and even personally participated in the execution of Major Andrzej Tchaikovsky. These are the faces and names of just some of the men that he sent to prison or to their deaths. The executed soldiers' desecrated bodies would be dumped in unmarked pits. To this day, tragically, many of them have not been found, exhumed or given proper burial. Stefan Michnik stands accused of 30 crimes against humanity. This former judge who served in the very darkest days of Stalinist terror currently lives a peaceful and quiet life in Sweden and claims that his career as a judge was merely youthful naivety and that he was an unwitting tool in service of communist terror. Like far too many communists, he has not faced justice. The people he sentenced, their families and loved ones, and the Polish nation as a whole is being denied justice. Sweden, a nation at the very forefront of human rights, should not be a safe haven for communists. Communists, just like Nazis, should not be exempted from justice. Communist totalitarian crimes cannot go unchecked or unchallenged and their perpetrators untried. In the past, your government shamefully refused to extradite Nazi war criminals. Do not repeat this mistake. By refusing to extradite Stefan Michnik, you are becoming complicit in communist crimes against humanity. Dear Swedes, dear Sweden, please do not deny Poland and the Polish nation the justice that we deserve and seek.